All right, so most of my personal system is developed around never having to start a fire. Uh, you have to understand that if you're starting a fire in this type of situation, especially in a non-permissive environment, fire is one of the best survival signals out there. So uh, the reason it's one of the best survival signals out there is because you're putting off a lot of light uh, and it contrasts, it contrasts between the light and the smoke against a variety of different backgrounds and it has an olfactory aspect to it. It can be smelled for a long distance away. So what makes it a great signal makes it probably not a good idea for you unless you absolutely have to in a non-permissive environment during some sort of a bug out type scenario when you're just trying to get from point A to point B without drawing attention to yourself. With that said, you know, there are ways to kind of make a more stealthy fire to kind of reduce the amount of light that it's putting out, reduce the amount of smoke. And that technique is often referred to as the Dakota fire pit. Uh, and what it does is basically put the, the, the fire, it takes it from the surface and puts it below ground. That kind of hides some of the light, kind of masks it a little bit. Uh, and then typically if it's in an open field, you know, it would be, you would want to have branches overhead that are going to dissipate the smoke to kind of reduce that signature a little bit. Uh, I like to do them just inside the forest personally so that I have natural trees over the top of it. Uh, that'll dissipate the smoke by the time it gets up above the tree line, then there's a lot less signature to worry about. Uh, the other consideration when you're using a Dakota fire pit is aside from cold weather environments where you absolutely have to have this for core, temper, uh, core, core temperature control, um, this is kind of a real quick down and dirty, do what you need to do and then put it out and cover your tracks kind of thing. Uh, so I would never put my Dakota fire pit and do the business that I need to do at the Dakota fire pit near my shelter location, okay? I'm going to stop short of where I want to actually put my shelter. And in this case, this place I chose because I actually want to set my shelter up behind me uh, where I'm at right now. So before getting up in there, I want to do all this displacement and put off this light and you know anything that might draw attention to me. I want that attention to be drawn to here and then hopefully by the time anybody you know, that is tracking me or following me gets up here, I've already cleared this out as best I could, and I'm long away from here. It's not something I'm gonna sit and hang around. Um, but you know, I carry a water filter, so the chances of me having to stop every time I need to boil water to dig a Dakota fire pit, um, and then take the time of digging it correctly so that I can put everything back in place as best as possible, is pretty slim. Um, but it could happen. Uh, my filter could get clogged, could get lost, could get broken, and I'm down to boiling, which is why I carry a stainless steel. So that, that's part of my pace plan for water disinfection. Um, and, you know, there are some instances where this is going to be necessary for your body core temperature. So, you know, if you need to and you need to quickly thaw yourself out or dry yourself out and then move on uh, or locate this near your shelter, then that's your plan, your situation. Uh, so the key things to this is that you have a main hole, if you will, your Dakota fire hole, Dakota fire pit, that's about the size of a one gallon paint can. You think of it that, that, that size. And then you have a vent hole that is upwind that is actually allowing that to draft. And once it's drafting properly, uh, you'll have a lot less smoke. Uh, in this case, it's been raining here for a couple of days. Uh, so everything's kind of wet. So there's a good chance that because it's wet, I'm gonna have more smoke than usual, but that's okay. I'm in the forest, there's lots of branches to dissipate that smoke. Um, when you're creating a fire in this pit, you know, it's a very efficient fire pit. It only takes a very small fuel, so you spend less time gathering. Uh, and again, this fire is not that big of a priority. It's something that I'm doing really quickly to maybe boil up some water, maybe cook a food source that I found really quick uh, so that I have something to eat, and then I'm gonna move away from it after covering up as best I can. But those are kind of some of the considerations that I want you to think about. So I would do my pit here. I would cover it up as best I could. I would continue to move along my route. And then I would do a 90 degree dog leg and another 90 degree and I would come back. And basically I'm gonna come back and set up well above this rock outcropping to where I can actually see where this was. Uh, that's just a, a series of dog legs to end up coming back on my own tracks. And the reason I do that is if this draws someone's attention, they're gonna be following me along a trail. They get to here, there's a lot of displacement that stops them. Uh, and by displacement, I mean, you know, I've moved things from their natural place. So as they're down here or following along here, 
they would pick up my trail and continue to move that way but i'm actually right behind them observing the whole thing so i've got some decisions to make at that point uh, i can handle that based on the information i have at the time but at least they're not going to surprise me because i'm able to watch this location um, but to dig the main hole uh, if dakota fire pit and boiling water frequently is something that you plan to do quite often you know it may be worth adding a shovel to your baseline kit uh, it makes digging these and filling these back in a lot easier but you can get away with just a simple digging stick um, depending on the ground that you're digging in uh, so practice these before you ever need them and decide you know what's best for you uh, if you plan to use this type of technique uh, i'm going to grab a quick digging stick i'm going to dig me out a main fire pit right here and then I'll put a vent hole in there and we'll get going. All right, for a digging stick, it's basically exactly like it sounds. It's just a hardwood stick, not a dead stick, that is sharpened on the ends and it's useful for digging, all right? So I'm gonna dig this out, get rid of the debris. If this wasn't so wet, I would take the time, I'd probably lay my poncho out and everything that I took off, I would put on the poncho so that I can put it back as close to natural as possible. This is all wet and muddy and chewed up, so I don't think it'll make that much of a difference. Uh, and again, I'm also going to be dog-legging to look back down on this area to kind of mitigate anyone that's following me. But I'm just going to dig this out as best I can. And with a stick, you know, it's easiest to just kind of break it up and pull it out with your hands. And this part takes a little time. I don't want to just throw this dirt everywhere because I've got to put it back in the hole when I'm done with it. I want to kind of keep track of it a little bit. And stacking it up around the, what I'm going to consider the front side also gives me a little more height to hide the light. But for a lot of places, it's just a matter of breaking it up with the stick and digging it out with your hands. Starting to get about the depth I want it. Sister said now all right that's pretty good i'm down into the clay now that's pretty good i'm down into the clay it's about the size of a gallon paint can so I'm pretty happy with that I hit a pretty large rock here that is just gonna have to be part of the bottom of the fire pit it'll be okay because that is not coming out anytime soon so I've got basically imagine setting a paint can down inside here that's about the size that you need now I've got to kind of check the prevailing winds because I want the vent hole to be just upwind and it feels like the wind is basically coming straight down through here and going across this way so i want my vent hole to kind of follow that along the wind uh, and take advantage of that draft my vent hole there's a couple ways you can do it you can dig straight down about six to eight inches away from the edge of your hole you can dig straight down and then tunnel across but i found that it's easiest to just take your digging stick 
and drive it through the ground at an angle. And I want the end of this stick to come out right in the basically the bottom of that. So that's typically the way that I'll do it. And I'll find a good spot, take my digging stick, and just start kind of burrowing out a hole without breaking this little bridge, all right? If you do break the bridge, you can fix it, but your goal is to keep it intact because you're, kind of, you're wanting to create kind of a rocket stove effect. Push it in a little further, kind of bore that hole out a little. Watch for your stick to come through the other side. There we go. Making that vent hole a little larger. I'll kind of pack that a little bit so it doesn't collapse, but I've still got my bridge intact here. And then this kind of poke through. So I'll pull all that debris out of there. And I'll clean up that vent hole from the inside. Just to make sure I've got a good draft and this is bending nicely. All right, that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, so just to make this as quick as possible and because it has been raining, I've got some cedar bark tinder, um, but it's extremely wet. Um, so just to make it quick, I'll use one of the mini infernos because this is going to take the ignition source rather quickly. It should burn long enough to dry that out and get that going. Then I can add some sticks. The goal with this is to have as small a fire as possible, but an, a, a rather efficient fire. Um, but if this doesn't work, if this doesn't burn long enough, I also have candles that will provide heat for longer than even this will. So I'll probably go ahead and put a little tinder on the bottom, kind of the more wet stuff. I'll save a little dry for on top. With these I'm just going to break it apart and kind of expose some of that fuzzy cotton, release that accelerant that these are soaked in. And then it should not take long at all to get it going. Get some of this dry stuff on top of that. But I don't want to smother it out. I want it to have a chance to dry and catch. They're very encouraging when they don't snap. <laughs> so what I want to do with this basically now is is get this going. Uh, it's a very, very wet day, so it's stubborn, so I've got to kind of slowly feed this in. It looks like the wind's changed a little as well, so I'm going to shift. My goal is to get a little bed of coals going here and get these flames nice and low. And with this, I'm going to cut some green sticks, and I'm going to lay those across the top and make a grill. Uh, I could kind of use that if I wanted. I could use that to... Uh, to cook whatever I needed to cook on that really quick, uh, or I can make something that I can set a water bottle on. 
and boil it real quick. Uh, so I'm going to keep feeding this and trying to nurse it. And again, it's going to burn long enough to dry this material out for it to catch. But it looks like it's venting pretty well. The air is actually coming in through here and hitting the base of that fire and pushing it up. And there's a lot of smoke because it's so wet. Uh, but again, I'm inside the forest, so that's all dissipating before it really leaves the canopy, which is good. But once this gets going really well, it doesn't take a lot of sticks. It doesn't take a lot of large fuel, so you don't have to spend too much time gathering things up. So I'm just going to keep feeding it. Little bits at a time. As long as the flame is above the last bit of fuel I put on there, then it's safe to add more fuel. But again, with this one, my goal is to keep a very low profile. Uh, I don't want real big roaring flames, um, which, you know, would be helpful for the uh, dried material or to dry out the material that I'm using. But, you know, it just kind of goes against what we're trying to do here. But I think it's getting pretty well established now. Let that all catch, dry out and catch and burn down a little bit and I'll start adding slightly larger fuel. I'm going to try to find some dry stuff though. So I've got kind of a bed of coals established here uh, and you know it's not burning exactly as efficiently as it could if the wood were dry but that's okay. That's what we got to work with and our main point is to get it going, get it going to where it's sustainable and use it as quickly as possible and move on. So I'm just going to set up a grate, basically, kind of a grill that I've just cut some green sticks here. Um, and more or less depends on what you're using it for, all right? So I wanna put my heaviest duty sticks kind of in the middle because I'm actually using it. Woo, it's getting me. I'm actually using it to hold the weight of the water bottle. It might be a little short. That one will work. Try to get those even. Because the last thing I want to do is spill my water bottle in there. And once you get that set up nice and even, of course, take your lid off. Find a good balance point. Or you could build a tripod over top of this. So find a good sweet spot here. So what I'm doing here is basically just in order to retrieve a hot water bottle. Uh, you could use a glove or your cotton or whatever, but you can also just tie a quick clove hitch around a stick and use that as a toggle. So that is a clove hitch. I've got two parallel wraps with a diagonal locking bar and an overhand stopper knot. And that is just two opposing half hitches. I can show you how to tie that real quick. Take a length of your line, throw a loop away from yourself, throw a loop towards yourself, you got one's away, one's towards, and then cross, I say to bug, cross one side, <coughs> it's still there, it's pretty good though, cross one side over the other. And that forms those two loops. Place your toggle right in the center. And then when you flip it over and tighten her down, you've got your clove hitch. Two parallel wraps, diagonal locking bar. Stopper knot on the end keeps it all from coming undone. If you pull it tight, it'll hit that stopper eventually and won't come out. And that gives me a way to retrieve my water bottle off the fire. And I like to offset it to one side so that I can get a camming action going. I'll drop it down in just like that. Bring it over to the water bottle. Drop it in. I gotta get that tail in there. Catch one side, catch the other. 
lift the water bottle up and set it over so that it will cool down. Put it somewhere even so it doesn't spill. That's pretty good. Release the tension on that, pull the toggle out, and then that you can wrap up and keep that right with your water bottle and you'll have it for the next time. That's a simple bottle toggle. Now once this pit has been as useful as it can be, you need to think about dissipating this heat out, letting it go out if you have time. Uh, and if it's not a kind of post event type of scenario, then obviously, you know, you got concerns with leaving things smoldering in the ground um, because they can start uh, a root fire. It's possible in some places, now, a lot of places it's not. The ground is so moist here uh, and the amount of clay that this is actually embedded in, I'm less worried about it. Uh, and obviously in some sort of, you know, uh, scenario where you're just trying to, you're actually bugging out, then, you know, that might be the least of your worries. Um, most of the underground fires that are burning are actually coal beds burning, not from the Dakota fire pit. But if you're practicing this te these techniques, then it's definitely something to be concerned with. You should let this go out uh, or attempt to put it out before you just cover it up because it can, they can smolder underground in certain conditions, certain environments. Um, here, I'm not quite so worried about it. But it is a good idea to kind of dissipate that heat a little bit. If you have time, let it go out. If you don't, go ahead and cover it up because this is drawing attention to you. Because if somebody smells this at this point, you've kind of alerted them that someone is out there, someone is out there doing something. Uh, so the chances of, even if they're not an experienced tracker chasing you through the woods, the chances of someone, you know, this catching someone's attention and then possibly wanting what you have uh, is, is pretty good. So you want to kind of cover this up as quickly as possible and continue to move out doing that 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree dog leg that we talked about. And so for this, I'm going to let it go out a little bit. Uh, I'm not too worried uh, about being followed at this point. Then I'm going to cover my tracks as best I can and I'm going to continue to move out. I'm going to set up my shelter location after I dog leg up and around and I'm going to kind of watch this area as I bed down for the night.